But for God's sakes, it's time. It's 400 years that we've dealt with this. Oh. And our country still has not taken responsibility or accountability. For what? For the history of the systemic racism that's in this country. What should we do more? Well, I mean, for, for one thing, uh, critical race theory. I think is essential to be teaching. It depends on what you mean by that. Well, I mean, I mean teaching how the race trade and and racism is systemic in everything we've done in in government in social uh, activities. Yes, it, it has been. I mean, it's 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 embedded in it. There's a, a Brian Cranston, actor Brian Cranston. They're talking with Bill Maher on his podcast about. The issues with racism in our country, which I guess a significant portion of the country is just too uncomfortable with. Think about that. It's the uncomfortable part that's going to permeate this entire discussion that Bill Maher is having. He's going to let us know that. Now, let's watch more of this. But critical race theory can mean it's, I mean, it's just one of these catch all terms. If you mean we should honestly teach our past, of course. If you mean more what the 1619 book says, which is that. It's just the essence of America and that we are irredeemable. But even even teaching our past and being honest and owning up to who we are as a country in the history. Most schools are doing that. I mean, I'm sure there are ones in Texas that are not. Look, in Florida, they're, they're, they, they want to do, do away with critical race theory in a lot of other states. Because, some, because sometimes it veers off into things that are really not appropriate in schools. So how do you govern you, that? If you're how telling you? five-year-olds that you're either an oppressor or someone who uh, was uh, oppressed, you're, you're introducing ideas about race that are inappropriate for, for kids that age who can't understand. Okay. Quite clear that Bill Maher has never looked into what this is or even understands that five years are not being taught exactly what his cartoonish thing is made up. And by the way, Dan, I want you to jump in for each of these clips because there's a few of them. By the way, he said, we should honestly be teaching our past. This is what Bill Maher said. We should be honestly teaching our past. And he said, of course. You say, of course, as if that's just it. It's not happening. So we're the very first point you make is what's not happening. And then when Cranston pushes back and says, no, it's actually kind of not happening. We're not really hearing about it directly and what it is that's happening, how it's actually affected our lives to this day. Somehow, he then goes, well, most schools are doing that. You just said we should teach it honestly. Now most schools are doing it. So why are you even bringing this up? So it's, it's fully quality. Everyone knows it, our history. Everyone knows how it's uh, how it's affected uh, the way our policies and the way our society approaches folks to this day. But Everybody's teaching it, except for a couple of few schools in Texas, because that's okay. The dismissive nature of how this system and the way our system of, 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 of policing, housing, education, and 17 other things, the way that, it, that it's, it's approached in this country, and then you go, it's whatever, a few, a few schools in Texas probably aren't teaching it. If you can dismiss that, that means you just don't give a damn. Just say it out loud instead of trying to talk your way around this. We have more of this, Dan. I'm not sure from this first couple of clips you have some thoughts first. Uh, yeah, I have a couple thoughts. The most important thing I have to say is that I am embarrassed that Bill Maher goes to the same dispensary that I do in Los Angeles <laughs> because I recognize the shirt he's wearing, <laughs> and I, I I've been to that joint before. It's real nice. Uh, new, shout out New <laughs> Amsterdam Nationals. But um, but <laughs> no, like. The more annoying thing here, of course, is Bill Maher, who, let's remind you, this podcast is called Club Random. It's one of the more like boomerish things to like ever exist. And this guy, he used to be like a and it shows where America was. In the 2000s, he was like the pinnacle of liberalism. He was the edgy one. He was saying right. what you could like, how far you could possibly go on TV. Being politically incorrect was this thing. Now he is practicing his own political correctness regime. And in fact, it's not even his own. It's the right wing Republicans, the super religious folks that apparently Bill Maher has a war path against. It's their regime of anti critical race theory. And again, like, He's following that line where he said, well, you can't teach five-year-olds all this complicated stuff about <laughs> five-year-olds are mad smart. <laughs> Honestly, in a lot of ways smarter than Bill Maher is. There were five-year-olds who Bill Maher would love who can start to ask questions about you know, life and spirituality and religion. That might be something Bill Maher might be interested in hearing from a five-year-old. But five-year-olds recognize race and they understand race. And giving them a framework, again, that is age appropriate because this is 
all what is happening. It's age appropriate teaching about race. It's important and it's good so that you start to build a society that like repairs some of the damages that our current American society has. And if you don't, you continue with the same ignorant folks that have no idea what they're talking about. I think a five year old could teach this guy more. Brian Cranston tries to tell him some more too and it gets more annoying. Let's watch. Level of maturity when a, when a child can understand that at certain times in this country's history, there was a grave mistreatment of other human beings. I think we get that. Well, no, we don't get it. What oh, do we get? Really? It? You think that is not something that is now widely understood and agreed? Yeah, it's definitely not widely understood. That America has a, a sorry racist past? It's talked about and whispered, but they don't whispered. know. Whispered? Yes. You, it was what? the Jim Crow laws. So, but that's so Emancipation ago. Proclamation I, I in 1865. It was 1965. Or in 1964, when the Civil Rights Act was passed by LBJ. But, but this is 2023. It took a hundred years. I know, but is my point. Can we live in the year we're living in? You don't think? Or you live in the year you're living? Okay, in. well, the year we're living in She's is not drive is, me to drink. It's not. You it's God, not what man. you're describing. There's only rejection and absolutely zero points in that pushback. It's uh, that was back way back in the day. What does that have to do with how it's not been addressed, hasn't been taught, hasn't been changed, hasn't been modified, hasn't even been recognized? So if you can just say that was a long time ago, and then we just move on, there's no, there's nothing to it. It's the most empty headed approach to this. It's just, well, not really. Well, I don't think so. That's not facts, bro. That's just your ignorance on display. Well, we're living in 2023. We see 12 videos a day of people that are oppressed, beaten to death by cops, ignored by ignored by physicians, dragged down hallways by teachers, attacked in those schools by police personnel, 12 year olds and stuff. But that's in 2023, we're living in it and we're still seeing it. You just ignore it, it's what I said yesterday, Dan. I'm tired of the police videos, I'm tired of showing them over and over and over again. Because the whole point was to prove to people like Bill Maher, this stuff happens right now. And then as it's happening right now, what we get is excuses. Well, what was he doing? He blinked his eyes four times and then therefore a cop is very afraid for his life and he must shoot him in the face. That's what we're dealing with right now. So the question is asked, how do we get from 1964 and where everything is great now to how we're still doing it and these same systems exist? If you don't acknowledge that it's happening, then you can ignore it, ignore it and say, ah, that was a long time ago. You mean last week, long time ago? Because it's still happening. Your last thoughts, because I'm it, tired of this guy. Yeah, yeah. I, I promise I'll be really quick with it, but I just, I can't let this out of my system. Is that you made an excellent point there about how these things are happening today. I want to make a broader point about comedy because, like, again, I used to be a Bill Maher fan as a kid. Like, there, there were, there are. The thing, the issue with comedians, I even there was a period in my life, and you remember this, Jr., where like I was listening to Joe Rogan all the time, and I would talk about this in the studio at at TYD, right? Like so, mm-hmm. the issue with comedians and when they always lose their edge is when they reach some sort of status, and then they start surrounding themselves with you know all the rich people, and then that's why Dave Chappelle's comedy no longer represents you know the working class, no longer represents people who are oppressed and struggling. It represents, hey, let's bring on. Elon Musk on the stage. I'm rich. Be all, like, it's <laughs> all of that like crap now. And so Bill Maher is so out of touch. He can, the fact that he is even saying these things, and Brian Cranston is the voice of reason here, shows how far gone this man is. And even though Cranston doesn't have all the points, you know, what I mean, yeah. it's fine. He's just he's giving them the outline of, yo, this is what we're seeing, and think about how far we're supposedly had come, but we still have it happening. The question is why. If you don't want to know why, you kind of don't give a damn about the problem. If this happened to one of Bill Maher's black girlfriends, he'd be singing a different tune. Let me tell you about that. Well, <laughs> I shouldn't he, have gone there, but he kind of doesn't talk care about, about that either. Let's keep it real. Yeah, you're right. Um, <laughs> there was more, and I don't even feel like talking about these guys anymore.